Back in September, Lisa and I went to Chicago for our son's graduation from Navy boot camp. And while we were there, we visited the Shedd Aquarium. And there was one tank in there that made me think I'm doing this all wrong. And in today's video, I'm going to fix that and create the best aquascape I've ever done. Exactly two years ago, I got this incredible 240 gallon aquarium from my friends over at Custom Aquariums. If you want to see the unboxing and setup of this tank, I'll put a card to that video up in the top right corner. Just click on the little I. After I had that tank running for a bit, I did a super simple scape, which was just a few pieces of black lava rock and a few pieces of cirro stone. I like to keep things simple and let the fish be the primary decoration in the tank. I was super happy with this setup when I put the 60 yellow labs in it that I got from Florida Exotic Fish Sales. My tank was done, it looked great, and I got plenty of compliments for it. Life was good. But like I said in the opening, that all changed when we visited the Shed Aquarium in Chicago and saw this tank right here. I swear I spent more time looking in this tank than anything else in the entire aquarium. I mean, it's not like I haven't seen this type of skate before. Tons of people have done it, but there was something about this one that just grabbed me. One of the things I loved about it was how natural it looked. There's algae everywhere and it almost looks dirty, but that's what made me fall in love with it. It just seems like exactly what you'd see if you went down into Lake Malawi. I just couldn't take my eyes off of it. And I told Lisa right there, I have to do this in my yellow lab tank. I haven't stopped thinking about this since then, but it took me a lot longer to do than I expected. It wasn't that the project took a long time. It only took me a day. It was finding the rocks that was the challenge. But before we get into all that, we got to talk about something really important first. In this video, you're going to see me put 750 to 1,000 pounds worth of rocks in this tank. And there's no doubt you're going to be thinking, isn't that a little dangerous? Well, I thought the exact same thing, so I had to reach out to two good friends of mine that are both experts in this. I first spoke to Ted Judy, who was a longtime employee of Custom Aquariums and actually the guy that brought me to their factory in Wisconsin back in 2019. I'll put a link to that video up in the top right corner too. I also spoke to Mark Beavers, who's the current national account manager for Custom Aquariums and my contact for all the work I do for them. I told both of these guys what I wanted to do and thankfully they both said the same thing. It'll be fine as long as it's done right. They said you won't want these rocks sitting on the glass. You'll want them to be supported by sand or something like egg crates under them. This will disperse the weight and eliminate the pressure points that could be hitting the glass. I told them my tank already has over two inches of sand in it and they said it should be fine. I just wanted to bring this up before starting the project because I didn't want you having a heart attack while I'm doing it. But on that note, there is one thing that can definitely cause a heart attack and that's the potential of dropping one of the rocks while putting it in the tank. Trust me, I was very careful to avoid this, but I'm not going to lie, it was super stressful. Now back to the rocks. I looked all over the state of North Carolina for a place that sells these kind of large round river rocks with no luck. Well, none of them had them on their website anyway. They might have had them, but it wasn't on their site and I wasn't going to drive all over the state looking for them. I finally found a place that had them pictured on their website and this place was in Virginia. I thought I was done with Virginia, but it's just over the border in Chesapeake, so it wasn't that bad. The only problem I had was this place was an hour and a half away and my truck couldn't handle the entire pallet of rocks, so I had to do it in two trips. And that wasn't fun. So when it was finally time to do this project, I set up two tanks to help with it. One was a 150 gallon stock tank that I put the rocks in and filled with water to clean them off, and the second was a tote to put the fish in while I was doing the scape. I used my trusty Ultra Zero from CJ to drain the tank and let me tell you something, those pumps might be a bit pricey and a total luxury buy, but this thing has come in clutch for me so many times I can't even count. Once the tank was drained, I did something I should have done when we moved in and that was move the tank down about 3 feet. 
I did this so that I can also slide the other two tanks down and make room for another tank. And let me just say, that new tank we're getting is going to cause quite a stir. You might want to subscribe so you don't miss that. And also, I'm not going to be competing in any strongman competitions anytime soon. The reason it was so easy for me to move that 450 pound aquarium around was because I ordered it with the casters on the bottom. If you're ever going to order a tank from Custom Aquariums, I couldn't recommend this feature more. It's not something you'll use a whole lot, but when you need it, it makes life so much easier. Now to the real strongman part, the actual placement of the rocks. This was way harder than you might think for a lot of reasons. First is, well, the rocks are heavy. And the second is the tank is 30 inches deep. So I got to hold them up, take them up over the rim and reach all the way down to the bottom and gently place them down. This isn't horrible if you only have to do it once or twice, but when you got to do it over and over and over again, it's a pretty serious workout. There's also the fact that these rocks don't just fall into place in the perfect position. Once they're in, you got to get down, look at it, go back in to reposition each one. It's pretty grueling. This whole thing was a lot harder than it might look. Finding a rock that's the right size and shape and then positioning it where it's stable and looks right is a huge undertaking, but I knew how good this was going to look, so it didn't bother me. I mean, if we're being honest with each other, yeah, I, I was getting beat up pretty good, but I knew it was all going to be worth it. All right, there we go. I got to tell you, look at me. This is, this is insanity. Uh, yeah, I feel real good about the way this looks. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this in the voiceover or not, but you might be nervous about these rocks tumbling down. Um, I'm nervous about that too, which is why while I was putting these things in there, I don't know if you could see me doing it on the video because my butt was probably in your face the whole time, but I was actually banging on the rocks to make sure that they're not going to dislodge and, and end up falling down uh, because this could be absolutely catastrophic if they fall down. Um, I would do that. And if there was any movement, then I would reposition it or put something underneath it to support it or whatever. Um, so I'm confident they're not going to fall down. These are not big bruising fish that are going to be in here moving the rocks around. So I feel good about it. I, I'm not really concerned about them falling down. Uh, but, you know, I'm not the luckiest person in the world. But listen, I'm absolutely exhausted. I feel like I feel like I've just had the most difficult workout of my life. Do I look like Zenzo Tozawa right now? Because I feel like I'm working out like Zenzo. It's out of control. I'm exhausted. I want to get this thing full of water and uh, hopefully get the fish back in there tonight. I'm a little nervous that when I fill it up, it's gonna be, the water's gonna be really dirty. So what I may have to do is the kind of same strategy that pond builders do, fill it up. And if the water's real murky, drain it out again, fill it up again uh, until it's nice and clear. But I did clean them off already. So hopefully it'll be good to go, but let's cross our fingers, fill it up and see what we got. I can tell already the water is going to be pretty dirty, but you know what? This is the easy part. All I got to do is watch the water go in. I'm not lifting thousand pound rocks. I swear. Once I got up to that top level, I felt like each rock was about a thousand pounds. The rocks weigh a lot more when you can't drop them. If you drop them, it's the end of the project and it's an embarrassment on social media. So they weigh a lot more towards the end.
prettiest ever. <laughs> I feel like I've been run over by a truck and then rolled down a hill and then when I get to the bottom of the hill they just kick me over and over and over again. That's that's what doing this did to me. So my whole plan of bringing the rocks in and putting them in the stock tank to clean them off turned out to be a pretty genius move because when the tank was all full, it was just the slightest bit cloudy. And the next day it was completely clear. And to be honest, this surprised me. I mean, I thought it would be cloudy for at least a few days, but less than 12 hours after doing it, the water looked like this. I gotta tell you, this is my favorite project I've ever done since I've been keeping aquariums. Yeah, it's just a simple pile of rocks, but it turned out exactly like the vision I had in my head and the fish absolutely love it. They're constantly going in and out of the rocks, up and down, all over the place. It's, uh, it is just absolutely adorable to watch. Is there anything cuter than looking in there and just seeing a head sticking out from a crack in the rocks? That's always been one of my favorite things to see with Mbunas. In case you don't know, yellow libidochromis are Mbuna cichlids from Lake Malawi in Africa. And this is very close to what you'd see in their natural habitat. Now these yellow labs natural habitat started as a huge concrete vault in Homestead, Florida. So they didn't know this is what they wanted, but now that they have it, they absolutely love it. I can't put to words how much I'm in love with this tank now, but I gotta tell you this. I'm going to love it way more in about six months. By that time, these rocks won't look like they were just put in there brand new. They'll have brown and green algae all over them, and to me, that's when the tank will be perfect and look even more like that tank at the Shed Aquarium. Now I've got some good news. I bought way more rocks than I needed for this project, so you know what that means, right? Yep, the Peacock and Hap tank is next. Be sure to subscribe to see that. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. I can't tell you how happy I am with the way it turned out, and I'm so glad I was able to share it with you. Thanks again for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.